wanting to meet you guys. But he likes Roger, the horses. Come out today. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Nice day for it. Yes. Uh, Mark. Mark. I'm going here to tell you about Special Olympics. What is Special Olympics? Special, o Special Olympics is a year long program. 20 years ago, who would have thought that Special Olympians, speed skaters, could reach world-class speeds of 32 kilometers per hour, that you would be skiing down a mountain at up to 64 kilometers an hour, and that you would be trained and have the stamina to compete in a 10-kilometer cross-country ski competition. Look how far you come. And the dream will come true. I've had this dream right from the start. And I'm bound to see it through. Now that the moment's almost here, let me abandon every fear. If I can stay strong, I can go far beyond. And I can be brave. Actually, what happened every year, Delta does a major fundraiser, and this uh, past year we took a survey with the employees to find out what company or fundraiser we actually wanted to uh, participate with. And the Canadian Special Olympics is the team of choice, and it won by majority by the Delta employees. Special Olympics, you know, it's for athletes. Uh, we're athletes, so we got to support other athletes, you know, and uh, it's a good cause. him keep moving <laughs> and drink more holiday. I mean, it's a, it's a good organization and it really helps a lot of underprivileged and underprivileged kids that, that I think that need back some help. Back. <laughs> well, they're doing really well this year and um, I think they get a good, a good group of guys. Because you've got this guy, we got these other two guys. And I guess this is a really good cause because this is a sponsor that uh, Special Olympics. And it's fun to do and uh, to come out and uh, support them because uh, they need all the support they can get. There's a mountain in front of me and it needs to be climbed. I'll reach the top one step at a time. Trivia. Here is today's trivia question. The Belmont was not always run in a counterclockwise direction. When did the race reverse the direction in which it was run? Well, the answer for you in a moment. Don't go away. The Sport of Kings will be right back. Time now for the answer to today's trivia question. Grey Legs 1921 Belmont was the first running of the classic to be run in the counterclockwise custom of American racing. Previous editions of the Belmont were run clockwise in accordance with the English custom. Our race of the week today is the 50,000 Johnny Longdon Stakes, named after the legendary Hall of Fame rider, of course, Johnny Longdon. It's a small but yet compact field. There are several multi-state winners in the event. Let's turn the microphone over to Brooke Ward. The race of the week is brought to you by Swift Thoroughbreds.
Swift Thoroughbreds, the home of champions and proud supporter of thoroughbred racing in British Columbia. Bank Emblem is owned by Leo and Norma Shaw. Bank Emblem comes into this race with a bullet work and a recent sprint victory. He will most likely press the pace. He's been training very wonderful, and I know he finished second in the stake last year. I think Crazy Coffee beat him. Uh, he only won once, and, but I'm a gutsy horse, and I think, uh, uh, you know, it's only two speeds, mine and um, Semino Brave, so we got to slow down the pace, and they gotta, those two other horses are going to worry about each other, but my horse got a little shot if we put a slow pace, so I think I got a shot. Texas Wildcatter is owned by Glenn Todd and Patrick Kinsella. Texas Wildcatter is no stranger to distance races. He will be a factor today. We're going to be like third, fourth, right there behind the speed. It's a couple of horses, like they have pretty good speed, like uh, uh, it's Mus Mus Ismael Mosqueda's horse, pretty good speed. So I think we're going to be behind. Crazy Coffee is owned by Butch Gertzen. Crazy Coffee's won just about everything a two-year-old could win at Hastings last year. His long stride and closing style will come in handy if there's a fast pace today. I wish he could have, um, we could have either got a prep or the races had been closer together, but that's just the way it is, and so we've had to deal with it. But he's worked and trained really well, and um, he's sharp, ready to go. I just hope that it isn't one of those kind of races where there's so much speed that nobody goes to the front. Seminole Brave is owned by Fran Snow and GG Stable. Seminole Brave continues to put in strong works and will likely press the pace today, although he doesn't always need the lead to win. I'm expecting a lot of him because I saw the race in front and he, the, he went two times already at the distance and he ran good. So we're expecting a good thing for this horse going long and it's short field. We'll see if I can make him relax and go behind the speed. We can get a piece, hopefully. Spaghetti Mouse is owned by Nick and Pauline Felicella. Spaghetti Mouse is the distance champion at Hastings, having won most longer races here. His training shows that he's ready to add to his trophy shelf today. He's been training good, up, you know, good as can be. He's prepared as he can be. It's going to be a tough race. You know, it's going to be a rider's race, I think. And now, let's enjoy this strong field of older horses. They're going a mile in a 16th. They're going in the John Longan 6,000. There they go. Field of five set on their way in the John Longan 6,000. Bank emblem right on the early lead. Spaghetti Mouse drives up on the outside. Texas Wildcatter settles into third. Crazy Coffee's on the bit early. And Seminole Brave. Rounding that far turn, it's Bank Emblem by a half. Spaghetti Mouse second by a length and a quarter. Texas Wildcatter in third. Wilson trying to harness Crazy Coffee back. Then Seminole Brave in fifth. Opening quarter, 24 and one. Through the stretch for the first time now. Bank Emblem, little out from the rail with the lead. Spaghetti Mouse second by two and a half. Texas Wildcatter in third. Seminole Brave on the outside. And Crazy Coffee the trailer, but he's only five off the lead. As they go into the clubhouse turn, Bank Emblem still with that lead. Spaghetti Mouse pestering on the outside. Two and a half lengths back, Crazy Coffee pulls his way along the inside. Texas Wildcatter and Seminole Brave, half 48 flat. As they race down the box right now, Bank Emblem and Spaghetti Mouse still duking it out. Two lengths back is Crazy Coffee and Texas Wildcatter. Seminole Brave is now the trailer. He's got six to make up. Pass the 5 16 they went in 112 flat for six furlongs. And Bank Emblem still with the lead. Spaghetti Mouse still right there on his outside. Texas Wildcatter, Crazy Coffee, and Seminole Brave as they turn for home. It's Bank Emblem with the lead. Down the lane they come. Bank Emblem trying to spring a mild upset. Spaghetti Mouse, Crazy Coffee, Texas Wildcatter, and Seminole Brave. Bank Emblem, here's Spaghetti Mouse on the outside. Bank emblem to win the John Longton. It'll be Spaghetti Mouse second, Crazy Coffee, Texas Wildcatter, and Seminole Brave. Frankie, pretty nice horse. Yeah, he is. He's one of the guts horse I ever rode, been riding in my life. And, and you know what? He gives you over 100%, 150%. And like I said, they let me go in slow fractions. And I think I said, well, I got a really good shot. When Spaghetti Mouse hooked me, you know, all the way around, I mean, he was, Pedro was setting cool. He gave him a good ride. I used to, during for home, he passed me, and then I passed him again, and I switched sticks, and then he re broke my horse. So, yes, got a lucky jump, that's all. 
he got beat me uh, like turning for home and I mine I switched sticks and seemed like it helped him and it rebroke again and turning for home I I was running just for the mile for dear life. Uh, he did a great job, Frank Fuentes. He's wonderful. So nice to have a horse that can do the job, but he did a great job of getting him there. Is it nice to see him routing? Oh, I've always known he could route. He's a we almost won this race last year and the horse wasn't right, so uh, not as right as he is this year. He was right last year, but he wasn't as good as he is after a winter off that he just had, so pretty nice animal to have. Good job. Thank you very much. Today on our Vancouver Providence Sleuth to the Champions, we're taking you back one week to show you the race that you thought the Sport of Kings would be showing you today, and that would be the 2009 Belmont Stakes. Question for you, like I always like to ask you, did you think Calvin Burrell gave this horse a good ride? Because he did get criticized. The Salute to the Champions is brought to you by the Province Sports, where you can read Tommy Walski's column, Hoss Talk, every Friday. The Province Sports, it all starts here. And they're off. Charitable man breaks in stride for the early lead. Flying Private is there toward the outside, Miner's Escape. And then down toward the rail, Dunkirk is going to be forwardly placed. In the meantime, Mind That Bird has been taken back to last position and taken immediately to the rail by Calvin Burrell. So the field moves into the first turn now. And it's Dunkirk who will be the leader today. Dunkirk leads. Miner's Escape is second on the outside. Mr. Hot Stuff third through a quarter in 23 and two-fifths seconds. Charitable Man is rating just off the pace today. He's fourth on the outside. Summerbird rides the rails in fifth. Flying Private is sixth. Chocolate Candy is now seventh, and Brave Victory is eighth. And that's Love Gov who's racing ninth. Three lengths back to a cool and confident Calvin Burrell with Mind That Bird. They're in last position once again through a half mile that was pretty strong. 47 seconds flat, so Mind That Bird about nine lengths from a good pace up front. And that pace is being set by Dunkirk with seven furlongs remaining here in the Belmont Stakes. Miner's Escape is prompting the pace from the outside. Charitable man in good striking position. Now running in third. Down toward the inside, it's Mr. Hot Stuff. Racing fourth and flying private in between horses. Down toward the inside, it's Summerbird. Alongside that one, Brave Victory is now called on for run. And then on the inside, Chocolate Candy. And second to last is Mind That Bird with five furlongs to go. He's seven lengths from the lead as they enter the far turn. Love Gov is the trailer. They've run three quarters in one 12 and two. Around the far turn. Dunkirk still leading the way. Dunkirk by three quarters of the lead. Charitable man makes a bold run at the lead. And Mind That Bird's moving like a shot. Here comes Mind That Bird with a bold blitz toward the lead on the far outside. He's catapulting by horses. And now they're coming to the stretch. And Dunkirk fights on at the top of the stretch. It is Mind That Bird fully extended by Calvin Morrell. Summer Bird is going to take a late run at him. Dunkirk is not done yet. Dunkirk comes right back. Mind That Bird. And here is Summer Bird. And here is Summer Bird to win the Belmont Stakes. Summer Bird, an 11 1 upset. Okay, that's it for this edition of the Sport of Kings. And on behalf of everyone here, we would like to say thank you for allowing us to spend this last half hour with you on this Saturday morning. One thing to leave you with, remember, don't forget to catch those videos from the Sport of Kings on YouTube. Keep them straight, or we're going to get you on that final turn. But most of all, enjoy the weekend.